afternoon on Thursday, time to talk to Internal Audit. So can I welcome you? Hope you've grabbed a coffee and join me for a chat on how we might um, how we might proceed um, in terms of supporting each other through the um, key challenges for internal audit in the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm, I'm Liz Sandwith. I'm the Chief Professional Practice Advisor for the Chartered Institute of Internal Auditors, UK and Ireland. For those of you that don't know, the Chartered Institute of Internal Auditors is the only professional body dedicated exclusively to training, supporting and representing internal auditors in the UK and Ireland. We have approximately 10,000 members in all sectors of the economy in all parts of the UK and Ireland. And our members are part of a global network of some 200,000 members across 120, 170, not 20, 170 countries, all working to the same international standards and codes of ethics. Now, you may remember that we had a competition last week and I'd like to reflect on it for a moment. We looked at um, uh, communications between um, Chief Audit Execs, Head of Audit and the Audit Committee. I gave you all the opportunity to share with me and with each other some of your challenges and solutions around how you've achieved strong communication life. I was hoping we'd have a competition winner, but unfortunately we've had no response. Um, I'm now going to sound like my mother when I did something wrong, and I'm going to say I'm disappointed. As I know, we've all had challenges, so I'm a little bit curious as to why we didn't share. And that might have been my fault. So maybe I didn't give enough uh, notice of it during the, um, the session. Maybe um, I wasn't very clear about what um, the competition was around. So I'm going to try and do a little better this week. Um, which brought me back to remembering what my teachers used to say at school. They always used to say, Liz tries hard, but could do better. So maybe I'll leave that thought with you as we think about today's competition and think about what we're looking at today. So what I wanted to do was think about the risk lessons we've learned from COVID-19. I also wanted to think about how we assess the effectiveness of climate change risk management, and the quality of their carbon reporting aligned to the impact from COVID-19. And based on some of the research and talking to some people, I have actually found out some quite, I think, potentially concerning things that I wanted to share with you, some stats that I think, um, you know, is uh, are of concern, because I think we're almost in a perfect storm scenario. We've got coming out of COVID-19, although I don't think we're out of it by any means yet. We've got climate change coming around the corner, and we've also got the economic recession that we're in and heading into, and I think will last most of the remainder of this year and into next. Um, remember as well, if you like the Facebook streams and want to spread the word, I'm sure you do, um, be sure today today's live stream is one you share, and you can do that on the clicking the share button in the corner of your screen. After all, the more with the merrier with us. So what I wanted to think about was the impact and effects of COVID-19 and how they continue to be felt by businesses globally and how that impacts on our day-to-day -day life. Firstly, I'd like to think about how our organizations and our professions might succeed in uncertain times. So I think there are four key principles that we could consider, could, could consider in managing the impact of COVID-19 on your business. Have a clear vision of direction and be prepared to flex your muscles to make it happen. And I think that's the business as well as internal audit. So now is the right moment in light of the developing situation to review your long-term strategy. Consider how your competitors in your market sector might react and what the longer term market conditions may look like. Think about your business's desired end state once the crisis is passed and determine where your business is going to invest 
to facilitate accelerated growth. Now, don't just read into the words I've said business. Think about this from an internal audit perspective as well. So what's your long term strategy within the internal audit function? What are others in your market sector doing um, in relation to their long term strategies? Do you talk to them? Do you find out what's going on? When I worked at Channel 5, and I know it's a number of years ago, we used to get together, the heads of internal audit across media used to meet once a quarter and talk about challenges, not, not confidentiality breaches, but just talk about how we were dealing with some of the challenges. And that could be uh, new pieces of legislation when they brought in uh, the gambling um, legislation around running competitions on TV. Uh, and the requirement to offer a free route to enter a competition. What did that mean? How did we deal with it? So think about those as things that you might want to do moving forward. Never waste the opportunities presented by the adversity of a crisis. That's very true of internal audit. You know, you think about us as a profession back in February, January and in 2019 and think about what we're doing now. I'm hearing about flash reporting. I'm hearing audits that we do in, in five days that might be a learning review or a health check that provides a level of assurance to the business very quickly um, around key areas of potential high risk and especially new risk. So think about those. Think about how we can contribute to a mergers and acquisition strategy. Do you get involved in due diligence? Remember, you need your seat at the top table, but if you do have that seat, what are you doing around due diligence and how can you help the organization? So think about that as we move forward. Uh, it's no good having uh, a view or an opinion once the merger's gone ahead or the acquisition's gone ahead. How can you get there at the top table, part of the discussions as we move forward or as your organization moves forward? And I think because of what I'm seeing and hearing, as I'm sure you are, I think things like mergers and acquisitions are going to be quite high profile in the coming weeks. It was on the news this morning. There was um, employees of British Airways were talking about how British Airways was behaving. But then in the next breath, someone else was talking about British Airways looking to buy a Spanish airline. So, you know, how do these bits fit together? What is internal audit's role at this uh, uh, this moment in time and how how on earth can we contribute to the, to the future success and sustainability of our organization. Make sure we've got the right team. Have they got the right skills? Have they got the right capability and capacity to deliver these things? So some of the um, auditors that you know we are talking about, we're talking to as an institute, we're talking about work around the crisis management, business continuity planning. You know, what are we doing in those spaces and do we have the people? Um, somebody said in a conversation recently, you know, your crisis management plan may well have pandemic on it, but, you know, surely it has to be more than uh, in the event of a pandemic, meet in the car park, report to your line manager and await instruction. That's not going to work, is it? as we move forward um, into, you know, potentially, um, you know, what is it, strike two of COVID-19 as the autumn approaches. So, you know, let's think about whether it's fit for purpose and what we can do to contribute. And what about our talent? Not just the talent within internal audit, but hopefully there is lots of good talent in internal audit, how we're managing them, but also talent across the organization. Statements or phrases such as cash is king is very much in, uh, in grabbing attention at the moment. So supply chain, what are we doing as internal audit around our supply chain? We are, have a, a session next week on supply chains uh, and um, I'll tell you a bit more about it as we come to the end of this, but would ask you very much to, in, to join us and hear about how one particular head of internal audit is managing their supply chain. Um, so COVID-19 is impacting on supply chains. Um, some are not going to survive. Some of your suppliers won't be there, perhaps the smaller ones as we move forward. So we need to think about what are we going to do? So what are some of the key considerations we need to consider 
in terms of managing the risks that are emerging from COVID-19? What is our strategy? What are our operational supply chain contractual obligations? What about our HR workforce, health and safety? What are we thinking about there? Technology, data, telecoms, thinking about financing, cash, insurance. Um, some of the insurance companies have, have come under fire because there have been suggestions that perhaps um, they're not paying out due to COVID-19. So let's just think that through and understand what it means. COVID-19 is in effect the first of several major challenges facing organizations through the next decade. Um, I was talking to someone quite recently, um, a business uh, psychologist who said, COVID-19 is a training day for what is to come. So remember what I said about the perfect storm, all of these things coming together, internal audit, where are we as a profession and in your organization that will help your organization succeed and be sustainable as they move forward. So remember, uh, I talked to you about um, a competition. So first of all, let me remind you the theme of today. Um, you're, if you're just joining us, welcome to the stream. Um, the theme is about risk lessons from COVID-19 and centers around the impact of the virus on things like climate, risk management and carbon reporting. So one of the things that I want to ask you to think about today in terms of the, the competition, and I hope you'll all enter. So I want you to tell Talk to Internal Audit one of the things that you or your team have done in the last 11 weeks that you think has had a significant impact on climate change and how you will embrace it moving forward. For example, did you walk to the shops during lockdown instead of taking the car? Meeting both the exercise and the shopping requirements and have you started growing your own food and vegetables? As some of you may know who know me, my husband's a dairy farmer. So we um, tend to grow our own uh, vegetables. Uh, we had a, a bit of a problem experience um, two years ago now, and I haven't grown them since, but I'm intending to do some more work in that space this year, in that I was growing some wonderful cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbages, salad stuffs, all sorts of things. But unfortunately, the pigs escaped and they ate all my uh, plants, all my uh, vegetables. So they didn't get chance to uh, come to maturity. They even ate my strawberries that I was growing. So, um, but what are you doing and what are you going to take forward with you into um, the new world as we, we start, the new future as we start moving forward? So what I wanted us to think about then is climate change. Uh, and I've um, been having a look at what the World Economic Forum have had to say. Uh, and the response to the pandemic illustrates for them five actions that we need to take to ad address the global climate change crisis. They include making people the priority, thinking about the global perspective. So let's not think about it in a very narrow term. Let's think big picture and trusting our experts. So from an internal audit perspective, one of the things I want you to think about is what are we doing in your organizations around ESG, economic, social and governance agenda. The Institute is doing a substantial piece of research around climate change. Um, I'm certain that you will probably be given or sent out um, surveys to complete. Uh, some of uh, our heads of audit are being approached to ask them to give real life examples, case studies of what they're doing in this space. So building on that, I want us to now think about the climate change risk. So rethink the risk. We've known about the risk of global pandemic for years. If you look at Bill Gates, he declared in 2015 in a TED talk, that if anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus. We should be concerned. But in fact, we can build a really good response system. People didn't listen. We don't have a virus yet. We're busy working on that. And that is work that we need to do. We need to listen to the global perspective. The jury is out, according to the World uh, 
uh, Economic Forum on whether COVID-19 will prompt the world to choose the route of national isolation or global solidarity. But think about that from an internal audit perspective and think about your organization. Are you very narrow in your organization? Do you look across your market sector? Do you look across geographical locations? Are you thinking about where you might work with others in your space to build uh, global solidarity? Sorry, I'm having trouble with my words this morning. Global sol solidarity. But understanding as well that we're connected in vastly different geographical locations and circumstances. So some of our members um, and um, you know some of our 10,000 have presences across a number of different countries. I worked for an organization that had a presence in 150 different countries. Um, so what does that mean from internal audit? It means that we need to understand the different challenges of geographical locations. And that is around climate, it is around um, COVID-19, it's around economic recession. How do we as internal audit and can we as internal audit bring some of that together and learn from our colleagues in different countries working for the same organization or just general principles that will help us move forward um, in terms of embracing uh, working together, closer relationships. World Economic Forum is very keen on making people the top priority. And they state that it shows that large scale response to a global crisis is possible. Do we think that's what we had this time around with COVID? Or do you think we were more um, country focused than global picture? So we need to think and harness this compassion and proactivity to protect vulnerable people in all contexts, including those most exposed to climate impacts. Now that could be your organization. What does your organization do? What is its purpose? And we had a, um, a head of internal audit at one of our forums recently who talked about the difficult conversations he was having with their audit committee and their board in terms of matching the purpose of the organization, the values and the strategy in terms of what they were delivering. And, and he was quite clear, these are not aligned. Our purpose, our values do not align with the strategic direction you are taking this organization in. And he talked about it being a very difficult conversation with board and with audit committee, but over a period of discussion, he helped them understand that yes, these factors were not aligned and therefore the organization was at risk of delivering things that were not aligned to its purpose. Perhaps prioritizing projects that were not aligned to its purpose. So internal audit, can we help our organizations by having some of these more difficult conversations? We also need to be able to trust experts. And one of the challenges that we have had probably um, over COVID-19 more than we've had elsewhere is that um, the valid value of knowledge is becoming increasingly clear. And we need to listen to some of our climate experts and policy advisors um, in order to help us fight the challenges and the risks that are coming down the track. But how do we decide as uh, an organization and how does internal audit help us decide um, whether the experts that we are putting our trust in can be relied upon. There have been lots of conversations over the last 12, 13 weeks about, you know, who's saying, whose numbers are correct, whose numbers do we believe, and whether or not we can trust what we are being told. So within the organization, do we have experts in particular areas of the organization that we can and should be relying on? Internal audit is an expert in governance, control and risk management. So should the organization be able to rely on what we are saying around um, control and governance within the organization? And the new and, and emerging risks is internal audit contributing to the assessment of those and understanding the impact 
And if we are not managing those risks properly, are there consequences attached to them? So can internal audit build on that trusted advisor role that we have across our organization? Do we need to make a cultural shift? Um, do we need to think about what our organization is doing? So I'm sure you all saw the, the CEO of Barclays saying, uh, looking at the Canary Wharf building and saying, should I be um, filling that building again with 7,000 people? Are there different ways of doing things? Now, that's a cultural shift because certainly my experience in, in, in my time in the financial services sector, and not just that sector, to be fair, there are other sectors, has been, you know, working from home is not even a conversation you have with management because it's just never going to happen. The culture in the organization is you do not work from home. So moving forward, we've learned from COVID-19 that actually working from home is possible and works really well. So we've used the coronavirus work from home experiment, and that has, in some instances, not required any new technology, but instead has relied on new thinking. We have many of the tools that make major advances in addressing climate change. So what we need now is the will to apply them. Much remains uncertain about what the world um, what the world will look like when we emerge from COVID-19 pandemic. But the fundamental changes we are witnessing may well offer us a final chance to avoid a climate catastrophe. So then we think about carbon reporting and we have written a piece of technical guidance around how you calculate carbon usage. There is an imbalance of corporate resources on monitoring financial versus non-financial risks. That's true of internal audit, just as much as it is across the organization. So opportunities and values need to factor into our thinking. Perhaps boards need to skill up on sustainable, sustainability risk identification. For example, those airlines that survived COVID-19 are likely through um, government bailouts and will be those already thinking about what the world might look like when this is all over. How many airlines do we think will be left with the resources to return to pre-COVID-19 flight routes and numbers? And actually, do we want them to? As, as a, a population, do we want that to happen? And does your organization want that to happen? Have we proved that actually we don't need to travel eight hours for a one hour meeting? We don't need to fly somewhere to talk to people about what they are doing. There are other ways of dealing with that. So how will the balance of global demographics and household income be changed? Will people be less inclined to travel internationally for business as I've said, having adapted to technology as a means of communication. Now that we have a taste for it, will governments adopt extreme measures to fight climate change? And what would that mean for a variety of different sectors, perhaps the, the leisure sector, hospitality sector, travel sector, what's that going to look like? One thing is for sure, Financials will not be the key determinant of an airline's future. Climate change, other global events pose a much bigger risk. A number of airlines acknowledge a health crisis or pandemic as a key risk and climate change tends to be seen as a cost or potential reputation risk rather than a risk in itself. There are other risks in climate change. My husband is a a uh, dairy farmer. And there was something recently in the press about a mask that uh, you could put over the cow's face that would help mitigate the risk of the methane when the cows burp. And you do that apparently by feeding cow seaweed. Um, and it would slash massively the amount of um, climate change inducing methane emissions from their burps. Sorry, not very pleasant around lunchtime, but it is interesting. 
Preliminary research has indicated a small amount of marine algae added to cattle food can reduce methane emissions from cattle gut microbes by as much as 99%. That's just about changing a mindset of farmers across the globe in terms of what they feed their cattle. So, you know, sometimes it's little things that make a huge difference. We also need to think about disruption from the COVID-19 pandemic and think about how it might hinder and delay uh, other issues. So there was something in the press quite recently around the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo response to a new Ebola outbreak. And humanitarian groups have warned with authorities facing a race against the clock to contain contain the country's latest epidemic. And how is what's going on in the climate space, the COVID space, economic recession, how is that going to impact this? And this Ebola outbreak is as recent as the 1st of June. Uh, And it's the Democratic Republic of Congo's 11th since the virus was first discovered in 1976. we need to bear that in mind. So thinking about pandemic, could we be forgiven if we had forgotten about other threats to humanity's way of life? Thinking about the risk of robots, artificial intelligence, for better or worse, these are going to be the future. I I was listening to a CEO of a restaurant chain who was saying as we start to come out of COVID this time, um, you know, that people can book a table in his restaurant and the expectation is that they would order their food as they booked their table. Not sure that would work for me. I can never decide what I want from one meal to the next. So planning a week ahead might be a challenge. And then when you sit at your table, you would be shown to your table by a robot and the robot would bring the food to you from the kitchen. So you know, totally different experience for us. So robots are going to play, um, going to play a significant part in the future and probably replace many humans in their jobs. So uh, analysis, uh, analysts say, and the coronavirus is probably speeding up this process. People usually talk about human element to their interactions, but I think COVID has changed that not absolutely certain for the future and I think that we will be looking to find a balance but I think people are going to work from home everything I'm seeing and hearing two three days a week maybe Um, I think it's going to impact internal auditors and how we do our job and I think that we need to prepare ourselves for recognizing that tools coming down the track is going to be really important to us in terms of perhaps using artificial intelligence, robotics, data analytics to do some of the heavy lifting so that we as a profession can focus on the conversations around strategy, purpose, values, culture, um, and helping businesses uh, think outside the box and tackle things like climate change, tackle things like the economic recession, focusing on how we can help organizations identify cost reduction. Travel may be a good one that we could think about in terms of our organization, putting it in the context of the risk to the organization, how we might mitigate those risks and how the future sustainability of the organization can link into all of this. So if we think about future thinking, COVID is bringing many, many challenges for organization. But we're 13 weeks into this now and, you know, we have, I think, done remarkably well as a profession internal audit in dealing with this. But there's no doubting it is a powerful game changer in terms of ways of working. How many of us anticipated that, you know, we would be undertaking full audits uh, by simply um, working remotely from home? Who knew? that the Institute would be able to do external quality assessments remotely. And the Institute has come up with a a quick win for organizations who are not yet ready to undertake a full 
external quality assessment. They're busy um, adjusting to this. So we just need to think about that as we look to move forward. So thinking about what that looks like is going to be uh, really key in terms of what we need to be factoring into our thinking. Also, don't forget, we need you to share with us. So there's still a competition ongoing. We need you to be thinking about what are the things that you've learned, you've taken away, you've applied during this uh, last 13 work weeks that you are going to uh, build on and retain. A colleague I had of internal audit talked about bottling this, and I quite like um, the concept because I remember watching my grandmother uh, bottle things to preserve them through the winter so she could use them um, in those dark days of the winter when things were not available as readily. Now I know, okay, different world, we have um, freezers, everything is wonderful, but the concept of bottling something to preserve it for use in the future, I think is a really great thing for internal audit to think about. So maybe at one of your team meetings, there's an opportunity just to reflect on what you've learned from the last 11 weeks and what are the really key things that you want to bottle for the future to use as we move forward. So think about that and think about that when you share your thoughts, share the one thing that you are going to take into the new future um, as I, I'm calling it rather than the new normal. I like the new future better. Um, what is the thing that you are going to take with you? So please share it with us. We've got a competition. Uh, there'll be a prize because there's no point having a competition if there isn't a prize. So can I bear you, remind you of that as, as we come to the, the conclusion of this? Um, some of the things that we need to think about COVID-19 will likely result in the largest annual fall in emissions ever recorded. The carbon brief people estimates a 5.5% reduction globally compared to 2019. But what for me was more staggering is that this is exactly the level of reductions the world would need to maintain each year, each year for the next decade to keep below the 1.5 degree centigrade goal of the Paris Agreement. And this is based on the UN Environment Programme target of 7.6 annual reduction in global emissions between 2020 and 2030. So you can tell we have a lot of work to do and we don't want a, a COVID lockdown every year, do we? So what can we take with us? So can I leave you with those really quite staggering numbers um, and remind you that the live stream is available afterwards for those of your friends, colleagues who may have missed the live version of the uh, Facebook. Follow all of the exciting things that the Institute is doing on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. As a member, of course, you have access to the latest edition of Audit and Risk, with, which is on our website. And you know me, I'm happy to take questions via email at Liz, L -I -Z, dot sandwith at iia.org.uk. Please join me next week um, at the same time, same place, to talk about supply chain management linked to COVID-19. And next week, we will have a special guest appearance from Maxine Granger. She is Group Head of Audit and Risk for Sophology. So please be sure to tune in. She has got some really interesting things to share with you. And we'll also, don't forget, announce the winner of today's competition. So if you haven't yet responded, please do so ASAP. So don't forget next week, your coffee, your tea, your water, and please, please remember, talk to Internal Audit because the Institute is listening. Thank you, stay safe, and have a good, if cooler and wetter, weekend. Thank you.